I want for us this morning to look at the epistle that was read for us from Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, and it was read from verse 1 to 11. Colossians 3, 1 to 11. Um, so I invite you to just at least find it so that we can all be on the same page. Colossians 3, 1 to 11. Just want to read the first three verses and then we will pray and reflect a bit and see what it has offer an offer for us as we, to how we must live. So if I have been raised with Christ, sorry, so if you have been raised with Christ, seek then the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above and not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Let us pray. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, speak. May we hear you speaking to us and may your spirit convict and enable us to become what you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So Paul is writing to whom? Uh, let, me, let me start right here. Who is Paul? Paul is the one who is writing this, the author. Who is Paul writing to? Who is Paul writing to? People where? Which people? Who? No, let me tell you something. Paul, all of the letters written by Paul, which begin in Romans, to 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 Philemon, the books carry the title of the intended recipient, the person to whom Paul is writing. And if you pay attention to most of Paul's letters, Paul begins the letters, most of them by saying, Paul, and they say like an apostle of Jesus Christ, a servant of the Lord, to, and says to whom. So let's go back to chapter 1, just to make sure we can follow this properly. Let's go back to chapter 1 in this uh, book of Colossians. Are you with me? So let's see to whom, because that's the question I'm asking. Paul is writing. So verse 1 and 2, somebody can read that for us, thank you. Chapter 1 of Colossians. So who is Paul writing to? He's writing to who you are saying is so the church people really be called out the people who are supposed to be set apart, saying is really the word to the Holy One. Meaning the people who have set themselves apart from others to live for Christ. So um, the Colossi is a place and so the Colossians are people who were from Colossae. Just like our Trinidadians are people who are from Trinidad. But Paul was writing to all Trinidad. My friend? He was writing to the Trinidadians who were setting themselves apart to live for Christ. In the same way, he is writing, I am saying, to the Colossians who have set themselves apart to live for Christ. So that's why he calls them what? Faiths. So he's not writing to everybody. Oh, okay. Well, so Paul was not writing to the city of Colossae. He was writing to the people in Colossae who were setting themselves apart to live for Christ. No, that's a big difference, eh? Are you with me? In other words, this is Castara, right? If I am writing a letter to people in Castara, it would be different from if I'm writing to the church people in Castara. Why? Because I would be writing to the understanding that the people who are going to church in Castara have volunteered to set themselves up to live a certain way while other people are not. Are you with me? So, if I'm writing to people in Kassara, I'm not going to be able to write to the villagers that there are some fellows in the class, they come from, they just want to stay by the book shop and drink rum, and there are some other fellows who might be eating in the village and all that. But if I'm writing to the Christians, I'm writing on the assumption that the people who are Christians in Kassara have decided to set themselves separate from all of these in Kassara 
interesting because here is Paul writing to believers, set apart people in Colossae. But yet, listen what he writes in verse 1. Let's go back to chapter 3. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek then the things that are above. Now, this is an interesting word, the word, the word I'm concerned about. Anybody could tell me what word I'm concerned about here? If. Now think about it. Paul is writing to Christians in Colossae. But yet Paul is writing to say, if you have been raised to Christ, then this is how you must live. Now, think about it. If you are writing to church people, in fact, one of the translations of this doesn't use the word if, but I think wrongly, but understandably, they use the word since. Because since and if mean two different things. Because if I say, since you have been raised in Christ, it means that that means you have been raised in a church. I agree. Mean, but if I say, if, it means what? I am sure, either I am sure you have been, or I know some of you have not been. So I, I have struggled with this, I must have been, because I have asked myself. So if Paul is writing to people who are set apart, they chose to become a part of the church. And if you become a part of the church, the whole idea and message of Christ is so that you will be changed, transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. You will be dead to sin and raised to Christ, like you like to Christ. That's why you want to become a church. So if that is what church is about, why is Paul still having to say, if you have been? So I, I, this is what I, I find challenging. Because I can ask myself, so what do you do in the church if they don't have any intention to be raised to the life of God? Now that is something that has bothered me for a long time. Because think about it. If school is for education, for learning, but you make yourself present every day for school, but you have no interest in learning, I can't understand that. I have to say. So, where was the school go? If everyone in the school is for learning, if you have no intention to learn, in the same way, I have to say, if church is for Christ changing lives and living for the gospel of Jesus Christ, and people go into church, but they have no intention of change, they want church for. I don't understand that. Why is it that you have people who are in the church, Paul says, they, they show, they set apart, saints, holy ones, You want to get a kind of 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 a kind of
come or perhaps perhaps one of these unfortunate things is that for some people this is sure to come look like a good organization you know, like how you have lions and, and jc's and, and all kind of other nice organizations so you know some people are going to join a club so the church is like a club so i come sign up and i get a membership and i get you know make sure i pay to keep the membership going you know, and some people see what's going to be there. Because membership entitles me to certain privileges. And so I will give to the church and keep my membership alive. And some people want to be privileged, they value very seriously. As a part of their membership in the organization, is when they're there, they will make a funeral and then they will get a spot. So they pay, make sure they pay the money to keep their membership alive. And some of them are encouraging and saying to carry on. They don't want to for nothing. They make sure, Reverend, Reverend, make sure we can sell us another one because another one comes with us all and send the news. What do you think this is? A blow? But we encourage it. We go out and tell them, if you're very quiet, make sure they send the news and they will send you even more. That's why some people are very blessed to trust very people who are not their ones. Because you need to tell me they come to us and they do for okay, every special provision you have to do for everybody else. I remember one woman said to me years ago when she saw somebody who was very evil because the purpose of the funeral service is not to be dead. 
Then you have the unfortunate part of it where for some people the reason they are coming to church is because they are misinformed. They are coming to church without any real desire to be changed and saved it's because they are wrong teaching idea and understanding of what church is. That's part of what Paul is addressing here. Paul is addressing the part, fact that there were persons in the Colossi influence, the Colossi situation where the idea was, so long as you kept certain principles and practices and traditions, you were okay. And Paul was going to say, no, that's not what the church is about. That's why, that's why he begins, he begins because he's contrasting chapter 3 with chapter 2. In chapter 2, he ends up by saying, do not want me to deceive you and mislead you. And then Colossians chapter 2. So you follow what I'm saying. I don't want you to think I'm making up anything, you know. So I want you to make sure. Follow the word. It's important. Paul is challenging them. Don't get misled. So if you, let me go further up and then I come back down. Colossians chapter 2. Are you following with me? Look at verse 8. See, you could read with me. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. Let me go on further. I'm just highlighting. Look at verse 16. Therefore, you can read with me or not, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food, and drink or of observing festivals on new moons and sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come. But the substance belongs to Christ. We go down further. Um, verse 20. If you are, if with Christ, you die to the elemental spirits of the universe, why do you live as if you still belong to the world? Why do you submit to regulations? Hear what the regulations are. Don't handle and do not taste and do not touch these things. All these regulations refer to things that perish with use. They are simply what? Human commands and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-imposed piety, make you look religious, humility, and severe treatment of the body, but they are of no value in the subduing of the denying of yourself. Whoa. Paul realized that there were persons influencing them, telling them to all these things to look at the so we look at past, but it doesn't truly affect any meaningful change in who you really are. What would be brothers and sisters? This is a serious problem that we have to be careful about because if you have the wrong teaching and understanding, you could end up in church thinking that you're going in the right direction and going to be wrong. And what Paul is saying here is that you have the human teachings and tradition that people were prescribing, that you could keep on them, but ultimately you still have that denial and suffering. That is equal to true for us to the other ones back then. We have to be careful because sometimes, sometimes what you have is that you have people who are in church and they're faithful to all the traditions and regulations. You know what I mean? They're faithful to all the traditions and regulations, but still have not truly something into Christ. They're not in Christ. That's why sometimes you have people who, in the context of our church, you could hear how faithful they are to this. We use our kind of word to describe them. Sarge Methodist. Methodist from God. Yes, you're covered. Love, you'll see Methodist. 
says, they are of no value in checking the submission of self They still indulge in self There is jealousy and fornication and all kinds of self pursuits because they still have not so many different. It's a shame for the true thing that you could have persons who are faithful in all the traditional requirements of the church. and practices they, they have value but not if they are what we think will get us right with God anybody hearing that so if after all the years you could speak of being a faithful and staunch Methodist but yet after keeping and observe all is required in the church As well, a lot of them, you know, there are times when we actually have ministers who are not saved. You know why? Because we were more interested in checking their Methodism than their relationship with Christ. So they got baptized. Mommy and daddy brought them to the church community. They went to all the different things, them, Sunday school and wherever. 
And in fact, very often in those years of Sunday school, nobody, they give them a lot of information, but never really challenge them to a decision in Christ. When they got confirmed, they were going to say received. In most cases, or many cases, that confirmation, while it should be, had nothing to do with whether they were deciding to live for Christ. In fact, you know most of the times is that you're old enough now, time for you to get confirmed. And I've had cases where people get to see that person. We have the idea of love is a class. And when I say, but they are going to be for confirmation. And it's expectation because of the one most of them say, Reverend, why you don't just say anything like I have that way? You can write it down and then pass it to pass it and pass it. He said, when you do that, I think this is the intellect where you evaluate in your decision to make a right. How many of us, when we got confirmed, we, we got confirmed because I have to make sure you show up in confirmation class and um, appear to participate and understand. And when the time comes, say the right thing and we go to go keep the tradition. And after that confirmation, it had nothing to do with the one who made Most of us. But you became now born a fight and go to the church that I go, that meant you could get a booty out. So once you become a member now, all you have to be is a willing spirit to participate in the church thing and everything. So the first time you have to say this is a female, women Sunday, because you youth, youth Sunday, or if it's a man, man Sunday, and they put you to do this song, or you're not good enough to have it. They say, oh, you should become a minister, you saw them a minister already. Must go into a prison now. Hello? So now we move from Sunday school, conform, conform member, youth fellowship to make big web and be, so you don't want someone. So now next thing you hear, you are not to preach. And then you're on trial. And guess what? All you have to do is make sure you're writing the exams and pass them. You have a pastor where you're having testimonials for the life of the series. You just say something to so fulfill the obligations. Because I tell you, they have been. I know one case where the souls are there in the testimony. They said the reason they want to come is because they want to travel. And that was written down in the heart. So I tell you how I interpret. But you say, well, how do you want to tell somebody for me to say because they want to travel? Because what they say matters little. So now they have somebody who's going into preaching. So they start to preach. And especially if people like one of the songs. You know, if people like the song, it they not come from experience. In fact, sometimes they will preach tonight and then next week they let every other person but they come and preach hard. Nobody is studying that. Make sure you do your song one. After a while, you continue to make sure you give your offering, you preach, you do what you're supposed to do in the church. Somebody said, hey, you think this time you should become a minister? They don't follow. They don't have to truly totally surrender their life to Christ. But it's a nice young man. A nice young woman. Who should go into the ministry. So they have to say to the ministry. And when the time comes and they ask to give a testimony to the pastoral council, everybody who listens to the testimony of a father who preached trying to grow into the religion, how you try to convince me that God called you? You know that really matters. We will support it when we young people in ministry. Can you walk? Hello? Then I become the minister. Send to you to be to train. Oh, I tell you now, sometimes they go to Pajanta. And you can see what you're telling me, we're not here to try and make them for a Christian. We're here to give theological education. So they come back out and you can see they got that plan, they don't bring that. Keep you. And they know some theologians. And they come and they have to do some exams and some papers on probation. 
And make sure that you will visit the little sick and preach on Sunday and even if you can't go by yourself without ready to lay in a substance. You do it by yourself. And then guess what? After two years, you have a hard day living in stuff with us. You want to hear me? You have kept all the requirements. Everything tick, 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 tick. You are it. Then you push up to some people for two years, especially if you are a person that has certain natural gifts and graces. We might just decide to make us to bring them down. Because maybe you have good management of people skills. Tick. And then push up to show. And if you have enough political sadness, we might even make a secretary of the shop. Hello? And all should have done. Your heart still not very good. Do you want to hear me? <laughs> so then the shop, because you hear pastor, not just this, we said just use all the time. You hear pastor this sleeping with the church member. You hear Methodist uh, minister or uh, whoever priest and the other colleague go talk and hear him mass and one mind and one water and other words and you can wait. It's how these ministers operate so. Paul said, be careful because you can take off all the box. But still, self is your dominant principle and not Christ. That's why he begins chapter 3 with saying, No, if you are in Christ, not if you have kept all the requirements of the, the human law and traditions, but if you have truly surrendered to Jesus Christ. Hello, are you still with me? Paul says it here. And he goes on by saying, if you are in Christ, look at it, look at it, chapter 3. So if you have been raised with Christ, he says your pursuit would be the things that are above. The things of God in Christ. Your mind would be set on the things. Are you with me? That's verse 2. Things that are above, not on the things of the earth. Why? Because you have, verse 3, died. And your life is hidden in Christ. Paul is saying that if you are in Christ, the whole self death. Anybody say amen to that? You know that's one of the great tragedies of our church? People in the community don't see enough evidence of Christians where the old self death. They see we go into church plenty, but the same you and me. They know from five years ago and ten years ago and twenty years ago is the same me and you this season. Just don't know if you get no church in now. I remember this story I was sharing earlier. I, 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 I was in this district where I was, not this one. Um, I was secretary. I was a secretary of the mission in Bangladesh. Let's say the village of Kassara, and you have um, a lot of crime in Kassara, and the church said, let's carry on 
You're just in this dark area now. She be bold. But when I call this for you now, and when I have a couple of times just in now, something will look like this work. So, there are times you know, you know, you've got your phone on. So, I call with your own phone, and they get it. And I say, no, nah, something more going on here. So, I will have a high school number for myself. I call her. Hello?
Paul says that if we are in Christ, change is supposed to take place. And Paul outlines, the last point I want to make, Paul outlines some of the important ingredients of what it means to be in Christ, to be saved. If you read it, read it when you go home in that chapter 3. The foundation of all that comes after is in that verse. If you are in Christ, if you are raised with Christ, and he outlines several things, several components that is involved in being raised in Christ. Several aspects to being raised in Christ. Talks about dying to the old self, effectively. You have died and your life is hidden in Christ, verse 3. You are seeking the things that are above, or verse 10, being renewed to the true knowledge according to the image of Christ. You don't set your minds on the things that are on earth, but on the things that are in heaven. You, you once walked, mean you change, you're not the same you used to be. You rid yourself of things that are conversion change. You know one of the sad challenges in Colossi, Paul had to write to tell them what does it mean, what it means if you are raised to be truly saved, to be truly in Christ, it is still one of the misunderstood things in our church. Still a lot of people don't understand what it is to be really a Christian. I've heard all kinds of teachings and definitions and, and thinking, which Bible are we using? And that's sad because if you have the wrong teaching about salvation, you could be going to hell thinking that you're on the way to heaven. Isn't that what happened in Matthew 7? These people of the builder, once you could say, Lord, Lord, and have the right language, and once you do good church things, that God will be happy enough for you. You remember Matthew 7, Jesus says, Not everyone who says, Lord, God shall enter the kingdom. So on that day, you will have many things. Church people, including their own brother. Did we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we do many deeds of power? You know, I have a very trust you. And Jesus says, I never knew you. Depart from me. Still, many feel that they will go to God and say, Wasn't I a young group leader? Wasn't I a son of a teacher? Was the guys from the school superintendent? Was the guy a preacher? Was the guy a school? Was the guy a minister? Didn't I go to different countries to preach the gospel to you? Was the guy? Didn't I visit people in the hospital? Didn't I go to the prisons? And Jesus said, You still get it? Who told 
call you. That's not for me. Depart from me. I never knew you. Because until self surrenders to Christ. Which is why the new writer says, Who the bit of shame and sorrow? That the time should have been start by saying, My problem was all of self. And what? None of me. Then he said, I moved, I progressed to some of self and some of me. Then I moved to less of self and more of me. But he understood that nothing comes to rest until it is denying self, not of self, and all of me. If anybody teaches you anything otherwise, they are preparing you for hell. If anyone can't do this is you, so long as you keep your membership and your good faithful message that God is pleased with that, they're preparing you for hell. If anybody can't do this with just make sure you do good work and you, you are a good person and you don't, don't get yourself in problem with jail and anybody will not get no problem. Live good with everybody and God will be happy with that. And that is not the scripture. That's why Paul says, you could do all of these things, but self is still indulged. Jesus said it. If anybody wants to be my disciple, let them what? Deny themselves. Take up their cross and follow me. So my brothers and sisters, read again. Colossians 3, going back into chapter 2. And I pray that you will be challenged to appreciate who you ought to be if you ought to be in Christ. I pray that you would be here in church to be surrendered and living for Christ. I pray that your story is not like those who come to church because they want a good feeling. Or those who see the church as a club and organization for membership and to help them do some good. Or for those who are just trying to keep their conscience alert. Or who like the look and the feel of being in church and people thinking that they're good. Or that you've been coming all the time so that's why you're coming. I, I, I hope and pray that's not your story. But if that is, thank God. Change is always possible, you know. Whenever we are not where we ought to be, by the grace of God, we could, God could take what's wrong and make it right. When we preach, the purpose of the message is so, if we are out of alignment, if we are not where we are supposed to be in Christ, that we use the opportunity and get right. Sometimes when people hear a message, they, they choose to vex up themselves rather than change up themselves. Every time the gospel is proclaimed, God is trying to point us in the right direction. So if we realize we ain't the right, thanks be to God, Jesus is providing us with an opportunity to make what is wrong right. But we have to surrender. That's why, that's why, that's why it's always important when we reflect on our lives, when we see we are wrong, we are able to say, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give, I surrender all. Not part, not peace, but everything. All to Jesus. I surrender all to Him I free.